Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about undervalued currencies. I'm going to talk about what is an undervalued currency and what a country can do about it. I'm also going to talk a little bit about this subheading currency manipulation. You see, sometimes when we see countries that have undervalued currencies, we think that is currency manipulation and it might be. But I would also say it might not be, okay? There could be other reasons for it. But I'm gonna talk about that as we get to the end of this video. But let's start with what is an undervalued currency and what do countries generally do about it? Now, I wanna say before I go any further, I want you to watch the uh, video about overvalued currencies. It will help you understand this one when you look at the two together, okay? So let's get to it. An undervalued currency. This graph is showing an undervalued currency. It's showing the Jordan dinar as being undervalued. Let me just say, I'm using the Jordan dinar because it is an actual currency that is pegged to the US dollar. And when we're talking about undervalued currencies, we're only talking about currencies that are pegged to another currency, okay? I am not stripping anything from the headlines out there, okay? This is not based in anything that's really happening with the Jordan dinar. I'm just using the Jordan dinar because it's an actual pegged currency to the US dollar. And that's the only time undervalued currencies come into play. All right, so I got the Jordan R, and this graph represents an undervalued currency, which sometimes presents a problem for students. And here's why. Our eyes as economic students are drawn to intersection points, especially the intersection point of supply and demand. So we see that point right there and we say, oh, that's above this peg. So we might want to say it's an overvalued currency, but we would be wrong. That is not correct. This is absolutely an undervalued currency. And here is the reason. Yes, the market is valuing the currency here. That's what the market is saying the value is, but the country is saying, no, 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 it's right here. Now, let me talk a little bit about this. This is a peg range because pegs are not usually a single fixed amount. They're usually a narrow range. And I'm going to point to the top portion of the range right now. I had it kind of represented right there, that top portion, because that's probably going to be what the conversion rate actually is. Okay. So the country is actually converging, uh, converting dinars for dollars and dollars for dinars at this rate. It is the official rate. It's the actual rate. Okay. It's the rate that is being used in official channels. And that rate is underneath what the market is valuing it at, making it a undervalued currency. So that's the first thing, undervalued currency. The next thing is what is this country going to do about it? Okay. Now, simply put, I want to reference the overvalued currency in relation to the undervalued currency. Okay. So here's the thing with an overvalued currency, we learned what a country is going to do is take their official reserve assets, supply those, what are official reserve assets, either the dollar or the Euro, generally speaking, in this case, let's think of it as the dollar because the dinar is pegged to the dollar. They're going to take their official reserve assets. So the central bank of Jordan holds dollars. They're going to supply them to the um, currency market and buy up their dinars. They're going to demand their dinars, shifting the demand curve for their dinars to the right. That's what they do with an overvalued currency. They would draw down their dollars. That's what we call that, drawing the reserve assets down because they're going to use those reserve assets to go buy the dinar. In this case, with the undervalued currency, they're going to actually build up their reserve balances. Why? Because what are they going to do? Well, something that's pretty simple for them to do. They're going to print dinar. That's right. They can just print as much dinar as they want, supply more dinar okay, to the currency markets, shifting this to the right. And when they supply that dinar, they're going to buy the official reserve assets. That means they're going to actually draw up their official reserve assets. They're going to build up their official reserve assets because you can see just from the graph, oh, I know how to fix this. Supply more dinar. They can print as much as they want, buying the US dollar, building up that official assets. Now, to understand that deeply, I'm going to get into the graph, okay? So again, this is basically the official exchange rate. It's what the currency is being exchanged at. And that rate hits the supply curve right there. So this is quantity supplied of dinar. Now, it's quantity supplied of dinar to the exchange market. So what does that represent? That represents people with dinar taking dinar to the exchange market. And why would you do that? To go abroad, basically, right? To buy imports from abroad or to do vacations abroad or invest abroad, right? So this is the quantity supplied of dinar. Think of this as people from Jordan wanting to head out of the country, right? That's how much. But at that official peg, quantity demanded. 
That's the quantity of demand of the dinar. There's a lot more people that want to come in, right? They're demanding the dinar. They have dollars or foreign um, currencies, we'll just say dollars right now, and they're wanting to come into Jordan, buying Jordan manufactured goods or do tourism or invest in Jordan. There's a lot more of them. And so what is Jordan gonna do? Exactly what we already said, right? They're just gonna print dinar, take them to this market and hand it to those people that want to come in to Jordan to again, for tourism, to buy their goods, or to put money in their financial markets, okay? Quantity demanded of dinar represents people wanting to come into dinar, saying, I need dinars because I wanna come into dinar to buy your goods, to do tourism there, or to invest in your financial markets. The Central Bank of Jordan prints out dinar, hands it to him, says, oh, come on in, come on in, come on in, shifting the supply to the right. They're printing that dinar, shifting it to the right. Now, one thing that probably comes to mind right off the bat is that sounds inflationary, and it is, okay? So I'm going to get into this a little bit here, okay? Very important you understand something. When you have an undervalued currency, you're making your currency cheaper than what the market thinks it should be. What does that do? It helps you sell your exports, right? Depreciated assets, okay, or depreciated currencies, and that's basically what they're doing is they're holding the value of their currency down, making their currency cheaper, makes buying their goods and services cheaper. It's going to help fuel exports. And if you help fuel exports, what does that do? That increases AD, causing some demand pull inflation. On top of that, when you make your currency cheap, that's making other stuff expensive. And you might have businesses who are buying inputs to the production process from abroad. You're making it actually, those inputs to the production process, process expensive for your own businesses. Again, if you have internal businesses that are reliant on inputs to the production process to do what they need to do, by undervaluing your currency, keeping it cheap, you're making those imports more expensive. I mean, remember, that's one of the reasons the quantity supply is only there. Remember, what was that quantity supply? That was people with dinar wanting to go out to buy things like imports. Well, when you're keeping it down here, you're making those imports um, um, more expensive. That's why it's so little. That's going to cause cost push inflation. That's right. We can have AD shifting right and AS shifting left. Inflation, inflation, which we know, right? It's just common sense, right? If you have an undervalued currency, well, how do you fix it? You just supply more dinar, print more dinar, take it to the exchange market. Again, like I said before, just handing it to those people that people that want to come in because there's this excess demand for the dinar. So what's the problem? You know, what's going on here? You know, is this, or, or is this a huge problem? Well, here's the thing. Some countries actually want to do this. This actually, not a bad thing to them. And why is that? Okay, this gets to the point of currency manipulation. If I've got slack in my system, if inflation is not a problem, some countries want to keep their currency devalued, right? It's very expansionary. It helps expand their economy. As we just said, it makes exports cheaper, right? Dries exports up. Imports go down, right? Imports go down. But both of those things shift AD to the right. So it's a very expansionary position. Now you can only do expansionary as long as inflation is not a problem. So what's the limiting factor to an undervalued currency? It is inflation. That is the limiting factor. Now, if inflation becomes so much that you're like, I do not want to maintain this anymore. I don't want to bring those additional uh, dinar to this market because inflation is becoming an issue in my economy. I don't have slack in my economy. I can't handle this inflation. What can you do? You can revalue your currency, right? When you have an overvalued currency, you can devalue, bring the range down. When you want to um, bring the range up, we call that revalue your currency. Again, why would you revalue your currency if inflation is a problem? If inflation is not a problem, your problem is going to keep going this way. It's very expansionary. But if inflation becomes a problem, which inflation is the major problem of expansionary policies, what do you do? You revalue. You bring the range up. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.